Hi, in this video lecture we're going to be talking about training a multi-layer perceptron. We've spent a few lectures talking about what is an artificial neural network and how does it, how is it trained basically, but I'm actually going to show you how to do this in Python and specifically using the Keras uh, toolbox. Um, so we're just going to dive right in. We have used a data set which we're going to be continuing to use in this example. That data set is available as a download in the video description here. So I'm going to pick up where we left off in the training. So before we we loaded our the tools, we've used pandas and seaborn. Um, we read in the data, we looked at uh, pair plots and then correlation coefficients. Now we're going to dig into more of the actual uh, machine learning here. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to split my data up. So first I'm going to split my data into um, the inputs, which I'm going to put in a, a NumPy array called uh, X, and then the outputs will go in a NumPy array called Y. So remember, we our data right now is in a data frame called plant data. So I'm going to go pick out that data and separate the inputs X from the outputs Y. So I'm going to be referencing that plant uh, data data frame. So I'm going to be referencing that plant data data frame um, and just separating that out. So here I'm going to say my X matrix is going to be the columns of plant data that I want to be my input. So X1, X2, X3, and X4. And then I will do something similar for my Y data. And if you recall, um, we had kind of a range of magnitude. So here Y1 is varying from 0 to like minus 2500. Uh, Y2 is going from 0 and a little below up to like nearly 2000. So we have, meanwhile, uh, X1 is ranging from 0 to about 10. Uh, X2 is going from 0 to 300. So we have quite a range of scales of our data. So it's it's a good idea to scale the data at this point. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create these variables that I'm going to basically scale my X and Y data. So if I use these commands, X scalar equals this min max scalar tool. Um, first, I'm going to need to import this min max scalar and I'm going to use the sklearn um, pre-processing toolbox here. I'm going to pull in a few of these uh, utilities from sklearn that we're going to be using. So bef actually before I run these commands I will do uh, from sklearn import minmax scalar, from sklearn dot model selection import uh, train test split, and then I'm also going to pull in um, this R squared metric from sklearn and then I will be doing some plotting here so I'm going to import a uh, plotting tool from matplot library. Okay so before we use that min max scalar we just have to tell Python that we're going to be using it. So I'll go ahead and run this. So what this min max scalar is going to do is it's going to um, it's going to scale our data so instead of going from 0 to 2500 or whatever it's going to go from 0 to 1. So it's going to normalize all of our variables uh, separately for our X's and our Y's. It's going to scale them all between 0 and 1. So we'll have all of our data on the same order of magnitude which just makes the fitting so much easier and I think this is kind of a necessary step when you're training artificial neural networks. Alright so I've got all my data um, uh, ready to go and scaled. If you recall, it's a good idea to separate out training data and testing data. The training data is what is actually in the algorithm, in that optimization when you're doing your fitting and you're just you're feeding it, you're feeding the optimizer a, ch a big significant chunk of the data to train on, but you don't want to give it all of the data. You want to keep some data out for testing. So essentially you want to fit your model, but then you want to say, okay, well, what if I fed this model some data that it has never seen before? Does it still do a good job? So I am going to run this command to split out my, my X and my Y. 
into X training data and X testing data. And then my Y goes into Y training data and Y testing data. And I'm going to tell it I want 20% of my data to be testing data and I want 80% of my data to be training data. So I will use this X train and Y train to actually train my model. And this uh, goes through my entire data set. It's, it's over a thousand data points. And this pull, randomly pulls out the data that should be training and the data that should be testing. And every time you run this command, it's going to be pulling different data points. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, now I'm going to pull in my um, the tools, the actual neural network tools that I'll be using. So I'm going to import Keras. I'm going to import from Keras.models. I'll import this sequential tool, which was going to allow me to architect my neural network one layer at a time. And I do want my neural networks to be dense. And a dense neural network basically means I want to have connections, data flow connections between all the neurons of each layers, uh, among the layers that are adjacent to each other. I want there to be a connection between every single neuron. So I will pull in those tools. And you may need to install Keras doing a, a pip install, which I won't cover in this video. All right, so now I want to build my model. So I'm going to, to tell this, um, I want to have this sequential model, which just means I'm going to build it one layer at a time. So I'm going to add my first layer. And when I add this first layer, I'm going to tell it, yes, this is a dense neural network. So every input is going to be connected to every neuron in, that, in my first hidden layer. So I say model.add, I tell it it's dense. This here, whoops, um, this five, this is how many neurons I'm going to have in my first hidden layer. So I'm gonna start out with five neurons. And I, in your first layer, you have to tell it your input dimension. So we have four inputs, x1, x2, x3, and x4. So that's where I specify that. Um, and then we tell this what we want our activation function for this layer to be. So this first hidden layer is going to pull in four inputs. Those four inputs are going to go to five different neurons, and each of those neurons is going to have a linear activation function. We don't have to specify the inputs for each individual layer. It will, because we're just adding our model sequentially, um, the Keras toolbox will automatically know uh, how many connections to make from one layer to the next. So my next layer is going to be my, um, I'm going to have a nonlinear activation function here. So my next layer, I also want it to have five neurons. These don't necessarily have to match, but we're going to keep them both at five neurons. And I'm telling this, my activation function is a hyperbolic tangent for this next layer. All right. Um, when I add my last layer, I need to specify how many outputs I have. So here, this is the number of neurons in this layer, this two, but this layer of neurons, because this is my output layer, uh, this needs to match the number of my outputs. So my outputs are Y1 and Y2. So I wanna have a two here, and I just want this to have a linear activation function. So this is just going to build layer by layer. So this is a multi-layer perceptron. This is actually a four-layer perceptron. Uh, so my I have my input layer, then I have this first hidden layer, then I have this second hidden layer, and then I have my output layer. So I'm just defining my, my network here. Um, this next line is sort of where everything is built in. I mean, this is where we actually run the optimization and do the, the fitting or the training of our neural network. So this line, I tell it to compile my model. I define my loss function. So I say, I want you to have a loss function to, I want you to minimize the mean squared error. And remember this, when you fit a neural network, you're just solving an optimization problem. So a popular optimizer is called Atom. So I'm just saying, use this Atom optimizer this Atom Optimizer is built into the Keras toolbox. And really, I can actually train my neural network with just that information. But I also want to collect some important metrics on the training with each epic. Um, so I uh, will say, I'll tell it, collect these metrics, this mean absolute error and this mean squared error. 
So this line, and I misspoke earlier, this line does actually not, it doesn't actually do the fitting yet. Here I'm just compiling my model and defining these parameters. But I'm defining this so it collects these metrics. And then this next line is I'm going to uh, define a history here. And I'm going to tell this to actually do the model fitting. So this history is going to collect all the statistics of my model with each epic or with each iteration. So I say um, history equals model.fit. I give it my, tr my X training data, my Y training data, and I tell it take up to uh, 400 epics or 400 uh, iterations here. Okay, there's actually one more thing that I need to do. I've, I've imported this sequential model from Keras.models, but I actually need the uh, the whole models uh, portion of the Keras library. So once I've got models, um, I can go here and I can run this. All right, so this is training now, and this is going to give me a little printout of my training history as it goes. So we're starting on the first epic. The first one takes a bit as it's compiling and um, kind of initializing everything. What it will do is it's going to pre-populate my neural network with a bunch of random parameters, so random weights and biases, and then it starts training. And after that, it, like, these, this goes pretty quickly. So this is giving me each step. It's telling me what my loss function is at each step. My loss function is the mean squared error, so that you also see that. So my loss on the first epic is 0.2922. My mean squared error is also 0.2922. And I can scroll down through here and just gradually see my loss function getting smaller and smaller, which means I'm getting a better and better model and I'm minimizing the error between my model predictions and the model output. This goes all the way to the uh, 400 epics and I have successfully uh, fit a model. So stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna pick up from here and show you how to look at your results with a parity plot and do some analysis on just how good the fit is.